<sighs> All right, let's see where this key card can get me. I still can't fucking believe I'm back on the moon. Oh, there's a second floor over here. I should check it out. Oh, this is the greenhouse. Okay, Ignessa's security card worked. That's good. Now I gotta figure out what's in... Oh, no. Krista. There's <sighs> a terminal here. Terminal 342, Terrace Irradiant Moon Base, Honey Pomelo Station, Greenhouse Facilities, Planetarium Access Control. Unlock Greenhouse Door. Alright, yeah, I can unlock the door. That means I can get in there and see what they were growing. Wow, they actually got all this to grow in here. That's amazing. Growing things on the moon is very impressive, especially with this type of setup. They got corn. They even managed some... Oh, haha. <laughs> That's a funny scarecrow. Terrace Radiant Moon Base, Honey Pomelo Station, Greenhouse Facilities. Season Simulation Results. Summer. Simulated season, summer, weather simulation effects, low humidity, less frequent watering, bright lights, forced planetarium temperature, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius, season yield, 13 pounds, 6 kilograms. Comments, humidity down on Earth is usually low during summer. Owing to the dryness of the air, our evaporative cooler has been operating very efficiently. Plants were watered once a day at first and eventually moved on to being watered twice a week without noticeable consequences. Oh, that's interesting, because the wasteland doesn't have that notable of a seasonal pattern anymore. So this is like pre-war stuff. Season simulation results. Fall. Simulated season. Fall. Weather simulation effects. Sun temperature changes. Shorter day cycles. Longer nights. Occasional rain. Forced planetarium temperature. 65 degrees Fahrenheit. 18 degrees Celsius. Season yield. 23 pounds. 10 kilograms. Comments. Weather changes affected the crops only slightly, making it a very productive season. We used a random date generator to choose watering days and dimmed lights to simulate overcast skies. Fans were also set to high power in order to replicate strong winds. Season simulation results, winter. Simulated season, winter. Weather simulation effects, very cold temperatures, frozen terrain, cold winds, no snow. Forced planetarium temperature, 37 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Celsius. Season yield, zero pounds, zero kilograms. Comments, as expected, there was no crop yield this season. We threw water over the soil so it would freeze and we'll wait until next season to gauge seed survivability. We are still unable to simulate snowfall. We, however, are confident that the results would not change. Yeah, what would be less than zero, right? Season simulation results, spring. Simulated season, spring. Weather simulation effects, warmer temperatures, longer days, flash floods. Forced planetarium temperature, 56 degrees Fahrenheit, 13 degrees Celsius. Season yield, 2 pounds, 0.9 kilograms. Comments. Warmer temperatures and longer days melted the ice over the soil, making it extremely unwieldy so barely any plants managed to grow. The ice froze overnight and thawed throughout the day as it mixed with sporadic rainfall. Very low yield. Well, that sounds like what you would expect. At least these experiments were working, even if they didn't ultimately didn't matter that much. Oh, they got the little apple tree. Ugh, it's so cramped in there. I guess they needed a closed environment for uh, weather conditions. 
Oh, they made a watermelon. Oh, and there's a respirator. They got actually got some apples from their tree. There's some seed packets too. Honey Palm and Low Station is under emergency lockdown. Code Papa Oscar India Sierra Oscar November by ID seventeen million thirty one thousand eight hundred forty one dash two. Soil, seed, radical, root hairs, hypocotyl, epigeal germination, hypogeal germination, plumule, epicotyl, root hairs. I wish I was at the Sierra Madre. I keep hearing about that place. I've never seen it. To get through to the bathroom. <laughs> the Credible Hulk smash pseudoscience. It's pretty funny. Well, Vincent's not in here. Where is he? Wow, those are really nice paintings. Ooh, wow, that's a really hot chick. Moxie. Nice name, too. Honey Palm and Low Station is under emergency lockdown. Oh, and they got a bunch of Sunset Sarsaparilla stuff. And another magazine. Alright. There's a holotape. Let's Have see. you ever eaten so much you get sleepy? It happens to me all the time. It's a wonder I'm even awake now. I don't think so. Food's pretty light here. I have to eat tons to feel full. Uh, anyway, Dan, I got this magazine for you. I know you don't care much about the dance-off, but I... Really, really want to win. So, if you could take a look at it, maybe we could practice later today. Are you really that desperate to get dinosaur nuggets? Oh, jeez. Just tell the boss to commission some for you or something. I'm too busy to waste time dancing. Dude, she was into you. <sighs> and I got to put the spacesuit back on to get out there. Okay. Let's see where else I can get into. Uh, let me check out this building over here. This was the rover garage. Oh, this is where that guy Anissa was cheating with, uh, worked. <sighs> okay. Wow, typical mechanic with the girly poster up. Wait, there's water running. Oh no. Oh, this is Jimothy. This was the guy Nessa was cheating with. Still don't know where the hell Vincent was. Some hollow discs here. Day three. Freeman's still busted. I just can't figure out how- Hey, Timothy. You missed breakfast, so I brought you some coffee and a croissant. Oh, thanks, boss. You wanna sit down? <laughs> you really need to stop calling me that. Sorry. For the habit. So, uh, how are you? Could be better. I'm tired, you know. 
I wasn't made for this. Leadership, that is. I'm way younger and less smart than any of the people here. I feel so out of place. Well, that makes two of us. You know, I'm just good with the rovers. I don't understand any of that high-tech mumbo-jumbo going on around here. I guess we've got something in common, then. Anyway, I gotta go now. I'll be at the greenhouse later if you'd like to hang out. You got it, girl. Ugh. As soon as you press play on this holotape, you are greeted by the loud sounds of a very enthusiastic couple having an intimate encounter. So many questions come to mind. Who are these people? What exactly are they doing? Why did they bother recording themselves? And most importantly, why did they leave the recording just lying around? Oh, this is Timothy and Agnesa. They recorded it? That's such bad taste when you're cheating. Ugh. I might have to give this to Anaximander. He will not like that. <sighs> well, I gotta figure out what else is here. There's schematics on the rovers. That's interesting. Oh, whoa, quantum! How did it get quantum? Is, there, is this the rover he was talking about? Let me see if I can take a look at it. Space Exploration Vehicle Number 2, Lunar Rover Mark II Freeman. Engine condition, 70% damage. Wheels condition, 15% damage. Optics condition, 5% damage. Suspension system condition, 95% damage. Energy panel condition, 2% damage. Huh, I wonder if I could fix it. This is definitely not a type of robotics I've dealt with before, but I'm pretty good with robotics. Let me see. This rover has suffered extensive damage to the engine and suspension. Repairs have been started using parts from Reed, but there's still a lot of work involved in finishing them. Open sample storage. Repair. All right, I got it working. That's great. Lunar Rover Mark II User Interface Firmware Version 2.5.19 Rover Designation Freeman Please input new command. Follow. Alright little buddy, come with me. Oh, it works! Its navigation is a bit off, but yeah! Shut down for now. Okay. Oh, here's the read one. This rover had been stripped for parts to repair for others. The wiring is also degraded, presumably due to the age of the unit. It would take an exceptional mechanic to repair it with just the parts on hand. Requires two scrap electronics, ten scrap metal, three conductors, a sensor module, and a repair skill of 85 or greater. Huh, that's a lot of stuff, but I might be able to scrounge that up. Let's see what's left around here. Oh, there's a terminal here. Looks like it has reports on all the rovers. Terra's a radiant moon base, Honey Pomelo Station. Performance report, Clark. Space Exploration Vehicle Number 1, Lunar Rover Mark II Clark. Most reliable of the bunch. Reinforced rocker bogey suspension system has proven worth it. Total drive distance so far is about 15 kilometers and has survived some intense touchdown scenarios. Has managed to climb slopes up to 22 degrees on smooth terrain, although it experiences substantial slip at slopes above 10 degrees and cohesional sand. Camera lens has some scratches, but nothing that needs immediate attention. Performance report, Freeman. Space exploration vehicle number two, lunar rover Mark II Freeman. 
I have worried for nearly a month after a really bad tumble. It's a miracle it stayed in one piece, to be honest. It took four people to bring it back here. Engine obviously damaged, but suspension system almost completely gone. Differential bar bent, pivots misaligned, rockers and bogies busted. We'll probably have to commission several new parts or send it back to Central for disposal. Ha, says you. Performance report, read. Space Exploration Vehicle Number 3, Lunar Rover Mark II Reed. Issues with antenna and camera. Old rover, so it's not much of a surprise. Comm signal tends to flicker, so the chance of it dying out of the other side of the crater is too high for comfort. Mostly stays here, considering borrowing functional parts to furbish the others, especially Freeman. We'll scrap damaged parts. Performance Report, Solus. Space Exploration Vehicle Number 4, Lunar Rover Mark II Solus. Took some bad damage after it got wedged between some rocks. Had to go pull it out and the antenna broke. I'm going to use some of the pieces on Freeman. Besides the broken antenna, however, it works just fine, so it's still a good backup in case of emergency. Performance Report, Tanus. Space Exploration Vehicle Number 5, Lunar Rover Mark II, Tanus. Second most reliable rover. Doesn't really see much action lately, but hopefully next month I can grease it up and take it out. Lisa's been pestering me for a rover, so she wants to get some samples out of that strange mineral she found. I'm not sure if I should give her one of the weaker spares, or a sturdy one like Tanus that can take a beating. Remote access. For more version 2.5.19. Unit 01 Freeman. Unit is offline. Unit 02 Clark. Offline. Reed. Solace. Tannis. That's weird. All the rovers are offline. Even if they function, it still says it's offline. Let's see if this one connects now. Okay, so it's recognizing Freeman now. I'm guessing all the other ones must have been shut down. Moon Rover parking only. Lesser cars will be clamped. Ha! <laughs> That's kind of funny. This rover took quite a bit of damage not too long ago, but aside from needing a new antenna, it's in fairly decent shape. Oh, I want to repair all these rovers. This one's much less damaged than the other one. I'll be on the lookout for materials, but I'm getting a bit distracted here. A lot of crap over here. Slept next to this pile? That would actually be kind of dangerous, I think. Wait, this is his PDA. Uh, I've got to read this. Terrace of Radiant Moon Base, Honey Pomelo Station. Welcome, Lunacud. Another lonely day. Having breakfast alone here again. Usually don't mind it much, but today I wish I had some company. And by breakfast, I mean, I just, just, I mean just some juice. But I have my food stash here, so I'll have a snack later. Freeman's still giving me trouble. The engine is constantly clogging and being a huge pain in the neck. I'm considering taking it apart, but that's going to take ages. I just need to run some more diagnostics and maybe I could get it at new parts. Unrelatedly, I guess I destroyed any chance of me making friends once I brought a sleeping bag to the garage. The boss didn't like me sleeping here and said something about regulations, but nobody else seems to have cared enough to say a thing, so here I am. I do have everything I need, food, bathroom, rovers, and my tools. It almost feels like this is my own station. I should give it a name. Since Max left and Vincent came in, the boss seems distracted. She probably misses him. Can't say I care much. I mean, he was a nice fellow, but he was sort of a non-entity. But coming from the guy purposefully isolating himself from the other 11 people on a moon base, yeah, I admit I'm pretty lonely and wish more people came around. 
I just sort of instinctively respond curtly to their questions, so they tend to leave right away. Sometimes just sneak into the kitchen at night to eat some nut mix, but I don't know. I wish I had more charisma. Uh, it's complicated because this is a two-way street. On one hand, yeah, they should probably try more, but you should try more too, especially with such a small group of people in this area. Pretty sky. Kind of sad to think about it, but I was on my way to the main facilities this morning when I looked up at the sky and just stood there for a while. So many stars. It's an incredibly beautiful sight. But nobody here seems to care. Have we all grown used to it? We barely look up when we go out for a walk. As if it is a, it's as if it isn't a big deal, and yet here we are, on the moon. That's no small achievement. It boggles the mind to think about it. That we can just grab a suit and a helmet and walk around this big chunk of rock without our heads popping due to the pressure? Technology really is amazing. But I don't have time to waste thinking about the pretty twinkling lights overhead. Got work to do. Beacon of hope. Things have been getting better, believe it or not. None other than the boss herself has been visiting lowly me. This is good. I spend too much time thinking about Alina. Thinking about what will never be. And here at Honey Pomelo, I'm pretty sure I'm at the very bottom of the pecking order. Not actually having a scientific degree. So I get paranoid about the others making fun of me behind my back. But I'm hoping the boss's presence here may encourage others to talk to me. And of course, chatting with her is really pleasant. She's smart and has quite a quick wit. Once you get over the shock of her face, she's actually really nice looking too. Her eyes make me think of cocoa milk. Well, that's not very flowery, but it's the first thing that popped to my mind. And I like cocoa milk quite a bit. A new plan. I don't know if I should consider this day good or bad. I was up all night thinking of how I could try to spend a bit more time with the boss, and, well, since I was sleepy, I ended up cutting my wrist with a saw pretty badly. I had to rush myself to the main facilities to get myself stitched together. Then came back and somehow managed to pop the stitches. The boss told me to take the rest of the day off, and now I don't know what to do with myself. So I guess I've got an idea. Maybe if I have a couple of tiny accidents. Not lethal, of course, just enough to go to the clinic. It would give me a chance to see her. I should feel terrible for thinking about things like this. I mean, she is married, and I even know her husband, for goodness sake. But he is not here. And what he doesn't know cannot hurt him, right? Note to self, get something for Dan's birthday, but what? I guess he likes orange juice? Well, it's the thought that counts, right? It's not like I can hit up the store to get him something fancy. What he doesn't know can't hurt him? Ugh. People are hurt all the time by things they don't understand. Luckiest man in the world. Wow, I can't believe I did that. I mean, I'm happy, of course, but wow. I had no idea I was so brave. I've outdone myself. I guess I was in high spirits after Dan's birthday party. I got to attend. Nobody said I couldn't. And it was amazing fun. We chatted, sang, ate cake, and played games. I hadn't laughed so hard in a long time, and everybody was welcoming. The boss couldn't attend because she was sick, but I still had a wonderful time. And one day, we were sitting together here in the garage. I was just poking around Freeman to try and remove the little pebbles that got into the engine, and she was sitting on my sleeping bag. When I was done, I went to shower, closed the door, of course. But my heart was beating so fast, thinking she was right there while I was naked, that I spent a bit longer than I originally intended under the cold water. So I dressed up and went to sit by her. She smelled so good, clean, fresh. We were eating nut mix, and then, without even thinking, I held her hand. She didn't pull away. Then I just looked at her and kissed her. She sighed before I knew it. Yeah, it was good. Very good. Afterwards, she was a bit upset, but she came around. I think I got her now. She's come over twice today. I guess that all of those self-inflicted accidents were worth it. I can't believe my luck. and I'm sure Alina would understand. And the boss obviously feels something for me too, considering how often she's been visiting me and how rarely we just talk. Wait, were you cheating too? Ugh, honestly, fuck this guy. 
You knew she felt bad, but it was fine because she came around. Honestly, I wouldn't be as mad if it was just sheer desperation and horniness that got you two together. But the way you guys defend it and double down on it and treat Max like shit is just really gross. A heroic goodbye, I guess. I hadn't ridden here in a very long time, but things have gone south in this place. We're all sick, except for the boss. I feel weak. My muscles feel weirdly soft, almost spongy. I've been coughing blood, so I know I'm going to end up like Hadley, like Francis, like Valentina. So I snuck away tonight. I don't want the boss, Ignessa, to see me like this. To see me die. I just want to have a warm shower and then go to sleep. And dream of her. It was the cake, wasn't it? I could have made her sick too if I had insisted on her eating the slice I left for her in the fridge. Thinking about it gives me the chills. It's taking me so long to write. Everything's fuzzy. I need a warm shower. I need to hug her. I... I'm cold. <sighs> you didn't have to die alone, dude. Well, Vincent's not here either. <sighs> Shit, okay. Need to keep looking for Vincent. And uh, those parts for the rovers too. I'm gonna check communications. The only place left. It's not like this place is very big. Okay, well, should look around here. I'm not using this office anymore. If you want to talk to me, come see me at the clinic. Thanks, Dr. Kokoshova. Open with Agnes's high-level security card. Okay, that worked. I guess she left this office for the medical office because she wanted to be closer to them. Terra so radiant. Hmm. A note to our visitors, please do not overuse the Kleiner Vance teleport experiment. If overload, it can cause system crashing. Ask a crew member if you have any questions or would like to know more about this fascinating teleporting technology. Enjoy your visit to Terra so radiant. Honey Pomelo Station, Team Alt Lock. Oh, so apparently sometimes they get visitors from Central. I wonder how this works. Whoa, whoa, it moved. Ah, it moved again, at least it works. Oh, this is a really old space helmet. This old helmet is cracked dirty and the glass visor is missing. It's obviously just kept as decoration. Yeah, this is antique. I'll take it. Puppy. 
Ah, shit, the computer doesn't work anymore. She stashed a lot of food in the filing cabinet. That's kind of funny. Okay, there's some spacesuit stuff in the lockers. That makes sense. Guest quarters. I guess this for when they had people from Central over. Oh, there's snow globe. That's so cool. This is a very tiny bathroom. Communication between facilities has been disabled. Door access will only be given to individuals holding a high level security clearance key card. Please remain calm and wait until the lockdown is lifted. Thank you. A drug and alcohol free workplace. What a laugh. All right, present identification. Let's see if this works. <gasps> Who the hell are you? Vincent? But, but, you're, you're the guy who poisoned everyone. Whatever, I don't have time for this. Fuck you! Are you even- <laughs> I saw him about to draw, but I drew first. Didn't expect anyone to come up here armed, did you? Oh no, Agnesa. The Naxamander's gonna be devastated. He had a gun concealed in some package food. <sighs> Did she, she leave that tape? Maybe I can find out what happened. Under emergency lockdown. What do you mean there's a lockdown? Override it then. Vincent, stop! You won't get away with this. Boss? What are you doing here? I didn't eat the cake. I know what you did to the others. You poisoned them. Why? Oh my god. Answer me! <sighs> Sorry, boss, but you leave me no choice. What? What do you mean? Oh, fuck. He just killed her. Didn't give her any answers or anything. <sighs> she didn't deserve that. Nobody does. He wouldn't even tell me what he was doing. She must have died about the time I got here, maybe even before that. Didn't make it in time. Again. Why does it always have to turn out like this? Welcome. Use are not found. Uh, override lockdown. Insert Ignessa's pass card. Please wait for the system to verify your access level. Checking for high level security clearance key card. Found. Checking for compatible DNA biosignature. Not found. Checking for Honey Palm Low Station Black Box. Not found. Checking for Central Mainframe Override Card. Not found. 
Access denied. Shit, I need all of those? That's why Vincent was still here and hadn't escaped. He didn't have all that. You happen to know where Dr. Kokoshova stashed the black box? Due to security reasons, location of black box and mainframe override card are only available to the station leader. Currently at A17,031,841-2. <sighs> okay, I guess I'll try to find it. Going into standby mode. At least the killer's dead, but now that means I'm alone on this base. Terrace Radiant Moon Base, Honey Pomelo Station. Welcome to Bang -a Bong Chicken Radio. This week's hosts. This week's host, Judith and Vincent, Country Week. Chosen. <laughs> Fatal error file loading terminated. Next week's host. Next week's host, Ignessa and Jimothy, Across the Stars. Chosen songs. 1. Atomic Baby, Amos Milburn. 2. Blue Moon, Mel Torm. 3. Far Away Places, Margaret Whiting. 4. Far Beyond the Blue Sky, Dyke's Magic City Trio. 5. Flying Home. Woody Herman and his orchestra. Six, hey, good looking, Hank Williams. Seven, how high the moon, LaPaul and Mary Ford. Eight, I ain't got no home in this world anymore, Woody Cuthry. Nine, I'm so alone with the crowd, Ambrose Haley Ozark Ramblers. Ten, Luna Rossa, Blushing Moon, Tony Martin. Eleven, Moon Glow, Duke Ellington and his orchestra. Twelve, Moonbeam Kiss Her For Me. BF Good BF Goodrich Silvertown Chord. 13. Outer Space. The Kirby Stone 4. 14. Satellite. Art Farmer and Gigi Grice. 15. Satellite Baby. Skip Stanley. 16. Sheltered by the Stars. Cradled by the Moon. Benny Kruger and his Orchestra. 17. Space Station. Art Farmer and Benny Golson Jazz Dad. 18. Under the Moon. Eileen Stanley and Johnny Marvin. 19. Way Back Home, Boswell Sisters. 20. When My Blue Moon Turns to Gold Again, Wiley Walker and Gene Sullivan. Huh. Oh, I've heard some of those songs. They're obviously going for a moon theme. Friendly reminder. Jimothy asked me to tell you all that from next week onwards, the radio frequency will be changed, as many of you have been complaining about headaches that may or may not be related to the old radios we have around. I have commissioned some new radios so we can get rid of the old ones. In the meantime, feel free to tune them into the new frequency, which is up and transmitting already. Please make sure to bring your old radios to the garage so they can be stripped for parts when the new shipment comes up. Dr. K. Hmm, were those old radios actually broken? I'm very suspicious. Stop trying to sneak in your own tapes! Okay, everybody, listen up. I'm sick and tired of the constant scuffles and arguments about people changing the songs in someone else's weekly playlist. Stop coming up here at night to put your own music in the queue when it's not your turn. It's not cute, it's not funny, and everybody will get their chance to play host. Anybody caught in the act will have their dessert rights suspended for a week. You have been warned! Dr. K. Wow, that is literally the only time I've ever seen her angry enough to use all caps. I guess I can tune to that new frequency. Oh, this is from the playlist. I guess I'll be stuck on this one forever, but all right. I need to get some of her hair. It would ask for DNA. I guess I'll look around for that black box. 